Lacerating body parts, tearing off components, and destroying subsystems. Games that best implement specific targeting into their combat mechanics do so with a view to make encounters more strategic. It's all well and good utilizing these mechanics as stylistic choice. Limbs flying akimbo is fun to watch, after all. But utilizing these mechanics so as to require strategic cunning and skill from the player can often yield a more satisfying experience. Horizon Forbidden West the Horizon games offer prime examples of targeting specific body parts as a core facet of gameplay combat. Both games see Aloy pit her primitive weaponry in battle with fearsome robotic machines. Destroying, removing, or saving specific machine components each have their own strategic advantage. By scanning a machine, Aloy will get to know their strengths and weaknesses, making clearer which parts will need to be removed to weaken their attacks, or expose their weak points, or to leave behind for her to collect. The best aspect of this are those weapons that can be shot off stronger enemies, collected, and then used against them. The Surge 2 The Surge games make great use of target lock-on mechanics to enhance combat. Targeting onto an enemy means locking onto specific body parts, Heads, arms, and legs are ripe for the taking with simple color-coded icons to indicate how armored each part is. But that's not all. In The Surge 2, get a humanoid enemy down to 10% or so health so that they're almost dead, and you can utilize the game's cut weapon mechanic. See, enemies hold a weapon in either hand, Removing whichever arm holds this weapon during the fight's glorious finishing animation will yield a tasty reward. Xenoblade Chronicles X Probably the most multifaceted combat system in the entire Xenoblade series, Xenoblade Chronicles X features a huge number of ways to engage enemies. Outlining each combat strategy lies way beyond the scope of this rundown. But one of the most useful attack mechanics is the ability to target enemy appendages. These are destructible parts of an enemy that will yield extra loot if you destroy them. Typically, with such a deep combat system, there are extra layers of strategy required with appendages. One, they've a hardness meter, requiring you to utilize the appropriate skills to deal the most damage. And two, destroying the appendages will increase overall damage for the remainder of the battle, so it's a useful strategy to focus on. Dead Space Who can forget the infamous cut off their limbs? The foreboding warning scrawled in blood at the outset of the first Dead Space game, and the on-screen tip to target limbs when you pick up the plasma cutter, and the audio logs reminding you to sever limbs, and the radio messages. You get the idea. Severing necromorph limbs is clearly front and center in Dead Space's gunplay. It's a stylistic choice, differing Dead Space's combat from something more typical akin to shooting in the head. But it requires a decent level of skill, initially to unlearn the typical parts you've spent years aiming for, but also as the necromorphs tend to flail violently, especially if you do happen to shoot their head off. Fallout 4 Instead of freezing time like some pause button, VATS in Fallout 4 is the game's method for slowing time, still enabling players to accurately target specific enemy hit points. It's still super fun to queue up hitboxes, with the resulting gory murder a spectacle to relish. Monster Hunter World Certain monsters have parts which, when broken or severed, yield extra attack options or limit monster attacks. Leaping atop of Monster Hunter World's humongous beasts to target these parts is a thrill, providing a fun alternative to typical takedowns by allowing you to target specific body parts whilst mounted, dealing a ton of damage in the process. After leaping aboard from the comfort of a ledge or platform, you can dagger attack to your heart's content. Even better, though, is that you can leap between specific areas of the monster, dealing insane damage until you can unleash your finishing move. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance There are a number of cyborg enemies in Metal Gear Rising who harbor collectible ID chips. Where are these ID chips? Well, in their left arm. 
And how do you retrieve the ID chips? Enter blade mode, of course. Otherwise known as the epically named manual slicing mode, successfully implementing an arm slice requires strategic cunning and stealth. Player character Raiden first needs to identify those cyborgs with ID chips with his augmented reality vision, before sneaking up to them to initiate the critical kill red hitbox. Dwarf Fortress For a game famed on utilizing player imagination as much as its deep gameplay systems and complex mechanics, Dwarf Fortress still packs an astonishing amount of depth into its combat. Practically every living thing in the game is damageable down to a micro level. This means that you can target skin, teeth, individual fingers and toes. It's even possible to target an arrow to your foe's ears, keeping them alive but burdening them with everlasting scars. Mind-boggling. MechWarrior The MechWarrior series harnesses this capability to target specific components supremely well. Combat is practically built off the necessity to focus on specific limbs, weapons, and cockpits, with each battle mech displaying separate damage counters for each destroyable section. Tons of fun can be had removing a mech's legs, with the effect on a mech's capability to continue battle changing between Mech Warrior games. My favorite is in Mech Warrior 4, when destroying your opponent's legs ragdolls the mech with the pilot still in control of its weapon systems and jetpack. Bushido Blade Vintage 3D fighter Bushido Blade was somewhat of a pioneer in body part damage when it was released in the late 90s. Instead of the life gauge typical in fighting games, opponents instead are overcome by blows dealt to specific body parts. Head, torsos, legs, etc. all require individual focus to effectively cause the most damage. Of course, attacking arms makes their punches weaker, or taking out their legs makes kicking impossible. Insta-kill is also achievable if you deal a solid blow to the head. FTL Faster Than Light As strategic a roguelike as you're ever going to find, FTL's combat is built around the need to target and destroy specific spacecraft subsystems. We're not just talking hull damage here. Taking out an opponent's teleporter inhibits them from boarding your ship, or blasting their engine prevents them from escaping. Everything on fire will need repairing, meaning it's a constant scramble from both sides to split crew resources between attack, defense, and rebuild. Homeworld 2 2000s-era real-time strategy sequel Homeworld 2 made fantastic use of subsystem targeting to cripple capital ships. A capital ship's targetable subsystems include gun turrets and engines, but they're only susceptible to extreme damage from specific craft, such as bombers. Requiring specific craft to deal damage to certain subsystems is akin to selecting the right tool for the job. The net result is a broad Starfleet composed of multiple ship classes being required before every battle. Elite Dangerous Perhaps inspired by Homeworld's subsystem targeting mechanic, Space Flight Simulator Elite Dangerous makes each individual module of a ship targetable. From external components like weapons to its vital internal organs and power supplies, especially distressing is a damaged cockpit canopy, ridding the player of essential HUD information with limited emergency oxygen breathable until the system is repaired. Assassin's Creed Valhalla a nice little combat technique in Assassin's Creed Valhalla centers around Ivor's bow. Aim the bow at the enemy and their weak points will visibly glow, and firing arrows takes away a good chunk of their stamina and health. Weak points are especially useful if you want to deal that finishing blow to end the fight, as you'll be able to momentarily stun your opponent with an accurate shot. Rimworld Deep mechanics, but perhaps not quite as deep as Dwarf Fortress, are aplenty in cult classic community management sim Rimworld. A hallmark of the game is its ultra-detailed micromanagement, and this extends to its body part targeting in combat against any enemy type, from tribesmen to high-tech factions. In similarity to Dwarf Fortress, the game keeps track of enemy scars, 
faithfully keeping record of their near-death encounters. And unlike Dwarf Fortress, RimWorld hosts a veritable shopping list's worth of body parts to go at, from skull and brains up top to tibiae and toes at the bottom. So what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead and share them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. We upload every day and would really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.